Picking up where we left off, we've got to flip the frame over so that we can put some supports on the bottom to attach our chicken wire. These are going to double as the perches, just like it did in the chick shop. I went ahead and measured across and realized that I could use one of the extra 2x2s that we had left over to span that distance. Fortunately, I painted the leftovers just in case I needed some extra scrap. And I got a nice snug fit. Again, with those snug fits, a hammer is a nice way to make any fine adjustments you need. Once it's in, you want to go ahead and measure your sides, make sure you've got your right length, and cut some perches to fit. I'm using some extra cedar that we had left over from the deck, and then I'm going to fashion in the front, and do the same thing there in the middle and at the back. Bottom's looking pretty good. We've got some one inch chicken wire left over from an old coop that was on the property back when we first moved in. And it was fine, but it was a static run and we're interested in doing mostly mobile stuff with our chickens. But we did save all the chicken wire from it, so I'm gonna try to repurpose some of that. It looks like it's about four feet wide, which should give us just about what we need to cover the bottom with one sheet, which will be great. Unfortunately, I ran out of poultry staples while we were putting the chicken wire on the sides, so I'm gonna have to go to the hardware store and get a little bit more of those. So I'm by the hardware store this morning. I uh, picked up everything that I needed to get this thing done. I hope. I think we're ready to push on through. So the plan is we've got these are going to be our axles for the wheel. Each one's going to get one. We're going to start with a washer on there. And just take this. Do there. Another <laughs> washer. And then to here. And then this system is going to mount. I'll do this, and I got these little U-shaped straps. I'm gonna mount three of them on this, so it's really well secured onto this. So these are the little straps that I'm gonna be using to hold this onto the wooden frame down here. Problem is, is that the width from here to here is longer than the width of our little perch bar in here. Not a huge deal, I'm just gonna need to go cut a couple more that are gonna be wide enough for this strap to fit on. But remember that when you're doing this. The back perches are gonna need to be wider than the front. I'm gonna need that perch to be probably two and a half inches wide in order for these to fit on and be secure. We got an extra scrap of two by six from our deck sitting around. So I just went ahead and split that in half, gave me what I needed and just a hair extra. Cut them to the right length, fit them in where the old perches were, and screwed them in place. The new perches are set. Now we're gonna get the chicken wire fashioned down to the bottom before we put the wheels on. Just like with the hardware cloth, bring it over and tack in the corners and sides, stretching tight as you go. I trimmed off most of the extra, but then I just went ahead and folded on the side. It was just a little bit over and I didn't want to spend the time cutting. I did cut a little bit extra out in this space. That's where the wheels are going to go and I wanted it to sit pretty flat. For our wheels, we're gonna take our bolt and we're gonna put a washer on. We're fitting on our wheel. And then another washer on top of that. Hold it down flat to the board and then we're gonna attach our straps. First one to hold it in place and then the second and third to give it extra strength. Once you've got both down, with three straps on each, we want to put the foot pegs on. Our wheels are about 10 inches, so that's where I cut our pegs. I brought it up and realized again I had folded it over and needed to trim some of the extra off so that the foot peg would be able to sit flush, or at least relatively flush, with the bottom of the coop. Screwed it in a few times, Flat brace on the front for extra strength. 
Now we've got to get this thing outside of the garage so that we can flip it over and then start working on the top. Meredith came out to join me for this part to make sure that I didn't get squished. So I am just realizing it might be an issue putting the siding on here. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Now let's assemble the door. Assembling the door is easy, but I didn't realize that my battery was dying during the process, so I lost a lot of footage up until I was able to get the siding on, but I had to move forward because we got to get those chicks out. Look at this beautiful machine. So the sidings came on well. We used tin snips to cut it. The back gets a little tricky. I mounted the sides on and then held it up against and marked where the shadow was. So if you're going to be marking this, if you're going to be marking this with the, the white material, you can see the shadow comes through if you've got a light source on the other side. So held it up and just marked that with a pen and cut it out. We've got to get the roof done, we've got to get some of the plastic on top, put it down with the hinges and get a latch, and once we do that, this wagon is ready for chickens. To build the roof, we're going to use another big rectangle and brace it in the middle. Screw all your sides in and add an extra screw so nothing twists on you. Once the frame for the lid is done, you can attach your hinges and then bring the whole thing out to your coop. Another person is very helpful here. If they can hold it up, it makes it easier to attach the hinges to the coop. And once the roof's on, you can bring out more of the plastic. The plastic is just wide enough that two sheets will stretch across to cover the coop, which was a great realization. Less work, here's my happy dance. Start tacking it in all the way around. Don't want this to blow away. And then you can attach the lock so that the lid won't open unless you want it to. Well, I think it's officially too dark for y'all to see what I'm doing, but all I've got to do is secure the roof down and this thing is ready to go. So we'll bring it back out tomorrow during the daytime so you guys can see what the final thing looks like. Well, like I promised in the last shoot, it is the next day. The sun has come out. We had some rain this morning, but it's given us a break. Now it is time to move the coop wagon out to its new spot so that we can get the birds out of the shed, move them into the new coop, move the bantams up into the bigger brooder, uh, until everybody's ready to switch on again. The new coop will be out here, out by the new garden area, so that they are ready to move in at a moment's notice. For now, let's go ahead and get the coop moved out to its new position. It's a few mornings later, and guess what? We've got chicks living inside of our coop. So these birds have been in here for what, two nights now? And they'll probably be in here for another few weeks while they get a little bit bigger. And then we'll move them off with the big flock. But it has successfully kept them safe for the last few nights, so I am very pleased with how this coop is working out. So, thank you guys for tuning in and checking it out. Good luck to you, let us know how you do, and, uh, and we'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching, everyone.